Okay, in this video we are going to talk about how to find equations of semicircles. And to be able to do that, we're really going to start with equations of circles. Because if we don't know how to do that, we're never going to get a semicircle. So um, we start off with the quantity x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Um, that's the equation of a circle. When you have this equation, uh, the center is the ordered pair h comma k, and the radius is actually just r. So one thing that people frequently forget is they forget that the equation of a circle is equal to r squared instead of just r. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so let's do an example where we write the equation of a circle. So we have this. Um, what I like to do is identify the center, and that'll be negative 4, positive 3, and then identify the radius. In this case, the radius, we go from 3 to 7, so the radius is 4. So those, in terms of our equation, are the point hk, and this 4 is equal to r. So now it's just substitution. So I'm going to substitute into the equation of the circle. So I get x minus, and now it's negative 4 because that's h, squared plus y minus 3, because that's k, squared, is equal to the radius, which is 4, and then we square it. And then you kind of want to clean this up. You rarely want to expand this, but you always want to clean it up so you don't have that like minus a negative and you don't leave 4 squared, you want to write 16 instead. All right, so now that we can do that, let's try to write the equations of some semicircles. So here's our um, picture. And first thing we're going to do is we're just going to write the equation of the circle. So I kind of, I made the top half, uh, it's supposed to be blue, but it definitely looks purple. Um, and then the bottom half I made green. So we have a top semicircle and a bottom semicircle. So our equation, there's our center. The center is at zero, zero. And then we need the radius. So I like to draw it in, but you don't really need to. Um, so our radius is 2. So we're going to write the equation of the circle. So that's the quantity x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. We're going to simplify that. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. Um, now what we want to do is we want to get the top half and the bottom half. So we have this top half here. Um, we have the bottom half here. So to do that, we're going to actually solve our equation for y. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So y squared equals 4 minus x squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But remember, when you take the square root, you end up with plus or minus. And that's the key to getting each of the two semicircles. So once we've done that, the top half is going to go with the plus. So y is equal to plus square root of 4 minus x squared. You don't need to write the plus, but I'm writing it to show what's happening. And then the bottom half goes with the minus. So the bottom half is going to be y minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're done. We've got both equations. You could graph one of them, you could graph the other, um, or you graph both. Uh, so those are our semicircles. Now I'm going to do a couple more examples. So here's a new circle. I'm going to do the same thing. Find the center, find the radius, write the equation of the circle, and then I'll write the equation of each of the semicircles. So the center here is at 0, 3. The radius um, appears to be 3. So we can write our equation. So that's x minus 0 squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to 3 squared. And then x squared plus the quantity y minus 3 squared is 9. Uh, subtract x squared from both sides. So y minus 3 quantity squared is 9 minus x squared. Square root, don't forget the plus or minus. That's where most mistakes come in. We get y minus 3 is plus or minus square root of 9 minus x squared, which means we're ultimately trying to solve for y here. So y is equal to 3. So I added 3 to both sides. 3 plus or minus square root of 9 minus x squared. Usually you write the 3 in front of the radical so that it's not ambiguous, like it doesn't look like it might be in the radical. Um, so we have this. But then again, we want the top half and we want the bottom half. So for the top half, you're always just going to take the plus radical part. So it's y equals 3 plus radical 9 minus x squared. And for the bottom, you're going to take the negative part of the radical. So y equals 3 minus 9, uh, y equals 3 minus radical 9 minus x squared. I don't know if I said that right. I think I did. 
y equals 3 minus radical 9 minus x squared. All right, let's do another example. So I'm just going to do a bunch of examples. So if you get what's happening here, uh, you could, you know, switch to a new video. Uh, I'm going to find the center and the radius. So draw them both in there. So my center is 6, negative 2. And the radius is from 6 to 10, so 4. We write the equation. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And then equals 4. Clean this up a little bit. So it'll be x minus 6 quantity squared plus the quantity y plus 2 squared is 16. We want to solve for y. So we move the quantity x minus 6 squared to the other side, which gives us this. We're going to square root and not forget to put in the plus or minus. So y plus 2 is plus or minus square root. And then we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And I'm going to put negative 2 in front of the radical. So we have this. And now we want the top half and the bottom half. So the top half is going to use the plus part. So it's y equals negative 2 plus our radical. And the bottom part is going to use the negative. So it's y equals negative 2 minus the radical. All right, so it's not that bad. It's the same thing every time. Uh, I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to do it in general, because you're probably wondering, you know, isn't there just a formula? There is, but there's nothing wrong with going through this process every time. So we got a center and a radius. So let's write those down. So the center is negative 4, 1, and then the radius, in this case, is 5. We substitute into our circle formula. So you want to do a lot of these so that it just becomes kind of second nature. So simplify. A lot of you can probably jump right to this step, which is totally fine. Uh, we want to solve for y ultimately. So we move the quantity x plus 4 squared to the other side. Take the square root. Don't forget plus or minus. And then we want the top half and the bottom half. And oh, sorry, we want to add one to both sides. I forgot. Um, so we have this. Now we want the top half and the bottom half. And so it just depends on like what problem you're doing if you want the top or the bottom. Like it, it's never really unclear which one you want. So top is going to involve the plus. So one plus our radical. And then the bottom involves the minus. So it's going to be y equals one minus our radical. So same thing every time. That's why it's good to do a lot of practice problems. Just make sure you're not screwing up the like x minus h, y minus k thing. Um, so now I'm going to do it in general and get something that some of you might eventually memorize, uh, but it's okay if you don't, because as long as you know the equation of a circle, you can manipulate it without any problems really. So I'm starting with our equation. I'm going to go through this in general. So I want to solve for y. So I move the quantity with x to the other side. I'm going to do plus or minus the square root. And then uh, I'm going to add k to both sides. So we get this. So this is kind of our general formula, but we could break it down specifically and say that the top part is um, going to involve the plus. So that's the top semicircle. And then the bottom is going to involve the minus. So we get k minus our radical. All right, and so those are kind of formulas you can use, but I think it's better to just remember the equation of a circle and then manipulate it so that you get whichever part of the semicircles, whichever semicircle you want. So if you want the top, use plus. If you want the minus, uh, the bottom, use minus. All right. Well, I kind of stumbled my way through talking about this, but I hope this was helpful and good luck.